slaves anymore because we're not slaves. If you cannot control what you eat, then you cannot control what you feel. Eat your largest meals in the middle of the day, not the end of the day. What part the homeostasis plays? Uh, you're on your way to healing yourself. The homeostasis is the internal environment where your body is at its ultimate functionality for healing. Just keep in mind that everything that is happening to you is happening for you. I always get pumped up when I see that intro. Hello, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us here today. You're in the Mind of Nature, hosted by Dr. Zari, the nutritionist. And today's topic is, what is a dangerous white blood cell count? I know this is going to be great. This is going to be great information um, for anyone that's um, joining us right now. If you have not already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is Dr. Farid Zari. Okay, so thank you all so much for joining us right now. Dr. Zari, I'm going to bring you up to the stage so we can get this started. I know this is going to be great information. Come on up and join me here <laughs> in the studio. Hey. All right. Hey, Carolyn, what's going on, Care? Oh, you know, not much. Just ready to get this great information, like always. <laughs> not much. What? I can't believe you just said that. Well, actually, there is a lot. You know, sometimes I think you just say not much just because it's the thing to say. But there's That's a lot me. going on. There a you lot. Go. Yeah, that, I feel better <laughs> with great. that one. You know, I know we're in the, the, the rushing world and all that. But, you know, anyway, it's a great to see you. You look marvelous as usual. We want Thank to welcome you. everybody uh, today. Uh, um, we're going to give you a good idea of this whole business about the blood, our blood. So uh, we're talking about, you know, what are the dangers or what is the, what makes uh, the white blood cell count so dangerous, high or low? So let's get right into it, shall we? Um, we first of all, I want to give you a real basic understanding of the uh, blood and, and how the uh, blood works. So when we're talking about um, the white and uh, the um, high and the low white blood cell count, uh, there's a, it might be a tongue twister for some of us. But um, the basic understanding of these uh, red blood cells will help us to understand more about <clears throat> the white blood cell count. <clears throat> so if, if you have low white blood cell count, you, you're, you're likely to, to get infections. And this is low blood cell. So if you're likely to get infections, this is called uh, leukopenia is the low um, blood, uh, the, um, the, low the low white blood cell count. Man, I'm, whoo, psh, 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 psh. Huh, you know, got to get it in. <laughs> okay. uh, if your, your white blood cell count is too high, it is leukocytosis. So there's a difference. The leukopenia is low. This is the low white blood cell count. And the high blood cell count is leukocytosis. Now, I've done a really wonderful um, video on uh, leukocytosis uh, as well as leukopenia. You can see both of those um, on my uh, channel right here at uh, YouTube. Uh, just look for it, you know, go right on uh, and click it on and then, you know, fill up that education center. Um, it's very, uh, very informative, and I know that you like it. You may have an infection or an uh, underlying medical condition like leukemia, lymphoma, or uh, an immune disorder, and that is when you have a high or white blood cell count. So, um, the next question I would I would say that a person would would ask before even going into all these bl uh, white blood cells, red blood cells, is first, you know, how does the red blood cell move around the body? You know, how does this stuff even work to make to make sense out of all the information that's going to come 
right at you today. So we'll start off with while um, the, the, the blood is about 90% water and listen to that ratio. The blood, our blood is about 90% water and it's sticky. It's a sticky kind of liquid that, that consists of red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and liquid plasma. Uh, the thing about what we see, we only see like red fluid, but you see just like in food and everything else is broken down into different categories. The red blood cells and the white blood cells uh, are made up of platelets, and we'll that perhaps get into hypercoagulation later. But this, these platelets allow that's what gives it the sticky um, texture, if you will, or that kind of viscosity in the the blood. And then liquid plasma is a part of that blood. You know, you see the blood when it separates, and you have that yellow part of it. Well, that's the plasma. A human body has about five quarts of blood. It's almost the same thing as a regular car, an automobile, uh, four to five quarts. And some, you know, that's why I use approximately because it does change in some other cars. Um, but the uh, human body has about five quarts of blood that circulate through the blood vessels. Um <clears throat> the heart is the main pump, of course, moving roughly 2,000 gallons of blood per day. Now, the normal number for the white blood cells or uh, the WBCs in the, in the blood is 4,500 to 11,000 WBCs per microliter. Normal value ranges may vary slightly from lab to lab. So if the, you know, a lab A may have a higher uh, count and lab B may have a lower count and they may consider both of those norms. So keep that in mind. Once a uh, mature red blood cell is in the blood circulation, it travels from the heart on the, the upper right uh, side of our body, upper, upper right side of, of our body, and then it quickly gets squeezed down to the lower right side of the heart, okay? <clears throat> so this will give you an idea of the circulation. Once a mature a red blood cell is in the blood circulation, it travels to the heart on the upper right side of your body, okay? The upper right side of your body. Then it's quickly, uh, it gets squeezed down to the lower right side of the heart. And I'm going to work on getting a, a, a smart board. That's my next, that's my next wish on my wish list to get a smart board so I can actually show you the movement um, uh, in circulation and digestion and uh, functionality, physiology, all of that, okay? Uh, a forceful contraction uh, on, this is again on the lower right side of your heart, a forceful contraction actually quickly sends its blood up to your lungs uh, where it dispenses into thousands of miles of small blood vessels called capillaries. Now, it's, it's just an incredible network. Like I said, I'm working on that. I'm going to get a smart board uh, so I can show you all this and you're going to love this. It just, just heightens the education. Now, let's go back to the capillaries because in the capillaries, the red blood cells picks up the oxygen contained in these tiny lower sacs of the lungs through the process called uh, diffusion. And now diffusion um, uh, is 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 part is a huge part of the pro process. I'll go into that as as we as we unfold this. But let's get back to the red blood cells. Not only do they pick up uh, needed oxygen, but they also drop off the carbon dioxide, which is ultimately exhaled from the lungs. 
you'll find out that the body is just so incredible that it's, it's like it's, it's incomprehensible. The things that we do and the things that we can do, we haven't even learned all the powers of the body yet. Now, once the blood leaves the lungs, uh, it, it is returned to that upper left side of the heart. Another squeeze pushes the blood to the lower left side, where a yet another forceful squeeze on the lower left pushes the blood throughout the body. That's that stroke whoosh, that pushes the blood throughout the body. That means that that stroke has to be strong enough to push that amount of blood uh, from head to toe and back to the heart again. The uh, blood ends up uh, in uh, a, a bed of capillaries uh, near the body's tissues that are in constant need of oxygen while simultaneously generating a steady stream of harmful uh, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is for out, not in. And that's why even if you're in a bedroom uh, by yourself, uh, it's good to have some kind of circulation, ventilation there. Because when you don't, what you're doing, you're breathing that carbon dioxide back in. And that is not, uh, uh, it's, it's more, it's harmful. Uh, and this, uh, I would like to put harmful carbon dioxide. Now, the car when, when was another time that you just experienced the harmful carbon dioxide is when you do what? When we put on those masks, remember? And people were saying, oh, you're breathing your own carbon dioxide. Well, we had a mixture of carbon dioxide and the air on the outside, so it wasn't so bad. But the, um, as you see, that the adjustments are made and some uh, adjustments that are made don't include a definition that says, in addition to that, we have air that is mixing. Now, air, oxygen is only about 21% or something of that nature. Of, of air. Everything else is a, a nitrogenous mixture, a, a soup, if you will, minutia. <laughs> and um, this is uh, uh, good for you to know because uh, a lot of times we hear this stuff in the pure sense that if you breathe your, uh, carbon dioxide right in, you will uh, you will die or you will, you know, something else can have convulsions or something. But again, the red blood cells, they actually drop off that needed oxygen and picks up the harmful carbon dioxide and make their way to the veins, which uh, will bring the blood full circle back to the upper right chamber of the heart. So it leaves on the, on the left and it comes back on the right and it does the same thing all over again. Uh, and, and it circulates uh, through the heart. And um, you, you'll see, as a matter of fact, there's some great film uh, on uh, YouTube that you can see this uh, and get a good idea of the movement. Um, I, I think another question might be, what do the other blood components do? Because there are other components and what do they do? They just kind of hang out, what? Well, let's look at blood plasma, it, which makes up 55% of your total volume of blood. It's mostly water, but it carries the nutrients such as the glucose, your vitamins and minerals, your amino acids, proteins, and fats. Now, plasma is important in maintaining blood pressure and it transports about 25% of the excess carbon dioxide to the lungs. See how everything works for the betterment of you? It's incredible. It's also, uh, it also carries um, another waste product called urea, which is eliminated by the kidneys. Now, those of you that are studying urology, you already are aware of this, but this is urea is waste and it is um, eliminated from the body through the kidneys and from the kidneys down to the bladder, from the bladder to the urethra. Platelets are also, uh, as uh, I would say, are there also a 
component of the blood. This is where we get that sticky or the important role of blood clotting. This is a vital function when when there is a, a injury, for instance, like a cut, a laceration, uh, or injury to the blood vessels. White blood cells role is to primarily fight infection. So that is, we have all of these mechanisms to keep us nice and and healthy as it can be. So we're going to continue uh, on with this. Uh, we're going to bring Carolyn back up and uh, we're going to reset about right here. And uh, we're looking good. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Zari. Uh, that's great information. Thank you so much. Um, thank you everyone for joining us here in the Mind of Nature. Today's topic is what is a dangerous white blood cell count? Thank you all so much for joining us. Please, if you have not already, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Dr. Farid Zari. Did I say subscribe already? I did, but I'll say it again. Well, we don't say it enough. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's Dr. Farid Zari. And thank you to those who have already subscribed. Uh, we see our, our subscription um, counts going up, and we want to say thank you to everyone because it is so much appreciated, so much. So I just want to say that. And thank you to everyone that's joined us here today, tuning in and um, just being a part of the conversation. It's a great, it's a great Saturday. Absolutely. Dr. Zari, back to you. All right. Well, thank you very much, honey. Uh, that was very, very sweet. And uh, <laughs> you're so cute. <laughs> uh, We'll go ahead and we'll move on to the high white blood cell count. This is what uh, we're talking about today. Now, when we talk about high white blood cell count, we're talking about, again, leukocytosis or white uh, high white blood cell count. And now this can be, uh, this can indicate a range of conditions, including infections. We talked about that when you have some infection. And that's what we want to do, that we want to eat, we want to exercise and rest so that we'll reduce infection and illness and 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 we want to reduce the pain and increase the healing uh, that our body can do through that rest. Now, a complete blood count is called a CBC. And it's usually performed to check the, uh, check for uh, leukocytosis. So, when you're getting a CBC, this is checking the different parts of that blood to see if that blood is healthy and balanced. Treating the underlying condition usually reduces your, your white blood cell count. So in other words, if you have an infection and you correct that infection, you will normalize or um, most likely normalize the leukocytosis. Again, don't be afraid of the word. Leukocytosis only means high white blood cell count. Now, there's another uh, neutropenia, which is a low white blood cell count. Of course, if you ask for the high blood, there's going to be people, yeah, what about the low blood? Well, okay, you have every right to do that. So let's go ahead and answer that. What's low in the white uh, blood cell count varies from lab, uh, one lab to another. As I said earlier, it depends on which lab. This is because each lab sets their own reference range based on the uh, uh, people that it serves. Um, so I want everybody to get that. I might have said that too fast. Uh, um, the each lab sets its own reference range based on the people it serves, because see that can change from one community to another. So uh, these um, um, reports on the activity of the blood can change just because of the the culture. Okay, uh, in general, uh, adults uh, account lower than. 3,500 white blood cells per micrometer of blood is considered low. That is, again, a count lower than 3,500. Um, for children, an expected count depends on, on their age. Um, the next question that I, I just pretty much know that <clears throat> you may ask uh, would be, is the 
a low white blood cell count a concern. Now, again, we, we always have to go back to, you know, equilibrium or balance. Of course, if it's not balanced, it's not going to give you a normal number. It's not going to give you a normal level. But a low white blood cell count is a consequence of serious diseases, and it, it can lead to harmful health problems, including infections and slow healing and cancer. A low white blood cell count doesn't cause symptoms, but uh, the complications of a low white blood cell count can cause many different symptoms. Now, the neutropenia is defined as a lower than normal number of neutrophils. And neutrophils are a type of white blood cells. The white blood cells are part of the immune system. Now, some people don't believe that there is an immune system. They got a whole other thing going on. I don't know what that pseudoscience is all about, but um, now, for now, this day, the reality and the evidence all point to what I am sharing with you to be the newest knowledge and the latest knowledge about the functionality of the human body. So when I am sharing this with you, I'm not sharing with you opinions. I'm sharing with you science. Some people don't believe in science. Some people think the world is square. I don't know. The, it's, it's your, it's, it's, that is all up to you what you want to believe. But what I am sharing with you now is science. There, there are a few types of white blood cells, and they <clears throat> each have a, a role to play in the body's defense uh, against germs. Let's start off with uh, neutrophils. Now, <clears throat> your neutrophils, they actually, you know, in general, is the a normal neutrophils level is about 1,450 to 7,500 neutrophils per microliter. This is how it's read uh, in uh, the lab. Uh, and you're, if, you're, if you are taking measurements in the hospital or urgency care center, uh, neutrophilia happens when you have more than 7,500. In other words, if you uh, are going the opposite way, instead of uh, normalizing, generally normal is from all the way from 1,450 all the way up to 7,500. But when you go over that 7,500 neutrophils per microliter, uh, then that's when uh, you have a condition called neutrophilia. Uh, then we also have the leukocytosis, uh, which actually happens when you have more than 11,000 total white cells per microliter. So neutrophilia is uh, like just before you get to the leukocytosis, which is the high blood cells, okay, the high white blood cells. So keep that in mind. You have your neutrophils, which um, uh, are a very important part of their just the uh, normal. This is when you at, at normal from that 1,500 uh, 1, to uh, 7,500. Then that next stage would be neutrophilia. And after that will follow leukocytosis. Uh, you've probably heard of lymphocytes. Now, lymphocytes include the T lymphocytes and the B lymphocytes. Um, what will happen if the leukocytes uh, count goes high? Well, a high count usually comes after an illness. Now, some people think you only get this when you are in the hospital, but these are things that happen uh, postoperatively, uh, seeing things that happen after an illness. It, it uh, is uh, most often harmless and it doesn't last a long time, but the, the higher count may be a result of something more serious, such as a uh, blood cancer or a chronic infection. 
Now, more tests can show if the, the lymphocyte count is, is a cause uh, for worry. So make sure that you take advantage of the examinations and getting the examinations are super important because instead of you worrying yourself uh, and, and, you know, instead of you feeling that, oh my God, I might have, you know, you're thinking of something way worse and uh, this can definitely cause another uh, um, side effect. And that is, of course, you know, like uh, you can have depression or you can have uh, overly, uh, you know, anxious anxiety. And these are some of the things that you can avoid by uh, just uh, uh, making sure you get an examination. Go in, get an examination, set your appointment for that. There's another cell called monocyte, and these monocytes are a type of white blood cell. Uh, the, remember that white blood cell is a leukocyte uh, that reside in your blood and tissues to find and destroy germs. The germs uh, would be your viruses, uh, bacteria, uh, fungi, and protozoa. Uh, and uh, they, the monocytes or the locating of these uh, and recognizing of these, these factors, uh, these uh, germs to destroy, is a huge part of the immune system. The immune system identifies, it seeks out, and it destroys. And this is really important. The other thing that the uh, immune system does as it has uh, a, a memory. And the memory is that the next time that your body is invaded with those same germs, bacteria, the fungi, the protozoa, well, our immune systems uh, remember that particular invader and it destroys it even faster uh, that uh, time that's repeated. Now, the monocytes call uh, on an, uh, other white blood cells to help treat injury and prevent uh, infection. So this is, again, that monocyte, not only does it help in destroying and protecting your body, but it also signals for other helpers to come along and to help you from getting sick. Isn't that marvelous? This is incredible. This is some really incredible stuff. Um, I'm going to stop for just a second, bring Carolyn back up, and we're going to give a few shout outs. Uh, and um, let's go ahead and give a few shout outs. We know that right now we're recording uh, this uh, for you, but we do think uh, uh, that during your uh, uh, listening to this, uh, we, we appreciate you. So let's go back and forth. You, I'll say one, you say one. Let's start off with... Uh, uh, the uh, our lovely family. Uh, we'll start off with the uh, gentles, the gentle smarts, Smiths, yeah. and um, all the all the other uh, um, uh, gentle family. Okay, go right ahead. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, really, it, really, anyone, anyone that's here. I don't want to. I don't want to leave anyone out. So I'm just going to say hello to everyone and the appreciation. <laughs> And the appreciation is always there. What Come was on, that? y'all. You're going to do this with me. You're going to remember. Okay. Chinesi. Okay. Shout out to Chinesi. Go, go, go. Hey, Yolanda. I see. I, I know for sure Yolanda's in there. She's, she's uh, sharing as well. Amira. <laughs> and on and on. Ron OJ. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, I get the point. <laughs> well, we want to welcome you all. Thank you so much. You know, there's so many names to remember. But as uh, Kara said earlier, we really are thankful for you joining us for every uh, presentation that we have because you make the difference. We are really looking good with uh, you getting that word out there for right here. Our YouTube stream is attracting many, many people now. Um, we are working on uh, getting up to that number. We want to get a, we want to get past a thousand because that allows us to do more things for you. 
uh, more things for ourselves. So we want you to continue spreading the word. OK, we want to do a give out an extra shout to um, uh, Mrs. Gentle, uh, also Mrs. Smith. Uh, we want to give a, 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 a shout out to her because she's been so, so wonderfully engaged in eating healthier, uh, going going to the gym, exercising, and we're yeah. all proud of her. So we're going to give it up to, yeah, yeah excellent job. Ex excellent job. So keep up the, keep up the work. I want to give a, a shout out to uh, some of my brothers out there, Eric. Eric one and Eric two. <laughs> and, uh, I don't even know if they know we called them by numbers, but it's two okay. Eric, it's so it's our code. code. It is it's right. our code. You know, it doesn't, you know, because everybody number two, I do. <laughs> you know, but anyway, um, we really are uh definitely thankful for all of you that uh make make it happen here in the mind of nature. That's the name of our show, and we want you to know that that's what we're speaking from the mind of nature what uh, we do to uh, keep ourselves healthy is to remain closer to nature so that we'll get the best results in reality so thank you very much everybody let's go ahead we're going to go back to this and then um it's almost time to wrap it up already so let's uh start uh oh I'm go sorry. right ahead that's okay. I just, wanted, <laughs> I just wanted to add to it because um, you mentioned something uh, as far as like breathing in uh, carbon dioxide. You mentioned that earlier. And I know something that people would recommend or that's recommended to keep the air fresh in your homes is to have snake plants. Have you heard of that? Like the snake plants? Yes, that's, that is true because the uh, plants, the chlorophyll, the greenness and all these plants, they help to correct the air around you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, go right ahead, Carolyn. Absolutely. And one other thing that you mentioned um, that really stuck out to me, uh, you said each lab sets their own gauge depending on, on the community it serves. So that seems to be kind of like it can be a little dangerous. Let's say I'm in a in an area where that lab does not serve me, you know, my culture or, you know, anything like that, what would that mean for me as that person that's going to a lab that doesn't necessarily serve me? Well, they have uh, what is called a margin of error, just like they do like when people vote. So, uh, you know, there's a margin of error there. So they know that within this number and that number that, you know, you will uh, be considered normal. And they may even have one for African-American people that uh, this measurement is just normal. Like For instance, uh, when uh, some people, as they get older, the blood pressure, they're still healthy, but the blood pressure gets a little higher. And that's just a part of aging, the aging process. So, okay. yeah, they do. And, and it's not, um, you wouldn't have to worry about it, uh, you know, like, oh, my God, this is just for Filipinos or this is just for uh, Mexicans or uh, because, again, they have the margin of error. Got it. Thank you for that clarification. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and move on. I'm going to go, I'm going to start off with another uh, this we were just reading through a few of the uh, different types of uh, blood cells so that you'll be aware of that. Uh, uh, macrophages are next. Macrophages are, are or they can be classified <clears throat> on the basis of fundamental function and act activation. According to uh, this, this grouping, there is a, a classically activated M1. Uh, these uh, these are the different types of macrophages. Uh, the M1 macrophages uh, is is one or activated M1 macrophages. Then we have the wound healing macrophages, also known as the alternatively activated M2 macrophages, and we also have the regulatory macrophages, which are called MREGs, and that's a capital M R E G S. 
um, and macrophages uh, take different names according to their tissue location, such as osteoclast. Uh, and what do you hear in that? Osteo meaning bone. So osteoclast. Uh, another is the alveolar. The alveolar macrophages. That, of course, alveolar, you know that that's in your lungs, right? So the alveolar microphages would be uh, uh, according to your lungs. And then uh, we also have a, a microglial, microglial. And now uh, the microglial uh, cells are related to or they're according to your brain and histiocytes, which is uh, connective tissue. And then you have Kupfer cells, which are related to your liver. And you have Langerhans cells. Now, I know you've probably heard of this because when we talk about the aisles of uh, Langerhans, uh, this is one word that you hear when we talk about pancreas or insulin problems, uh, type 2 diabetes, so forth. Uh, the Langram cells or LC uh, is related to the skin in this situation. Neutrophils are next, and neutrophils are the key infection fighters. Neutrophils form a very important defense against most types of infection. Now, normally, most of our white blood cells are neutrophils. In patients with cancer, the neutropenia, which is again the low white blood cell count, neutropenia is mostly or usually caused uh, by treatment. This is how we get the low uh, blood cell count is because it's usually uh, connected with some kind of uh, treatment and uh, some post-operative or post-illness uh, trait. Um, now, when, when looking at your risk of getting an infection, doctors look at the number of neutrophils you have. If your neutrophil count is low, a count of lower than 3,000 white blood cells per microliter of blood, the doctor may say to uh, you uh, that you are uh, neutropenic. Uh, and, and that's what that means, neutropenic. You, you have low blood, uh, low blood cell counts. For most people with cancer, having a low neutrophil count is the biggest risk factor for getting serious infection. So make sure that you ask your doctor, your PCP, if your cancer treatment will, be, uh, will cause your neutrophil count to drop. Okay, more about this. Um, Let's look at some of the things that you can do uh, as far as food is concerned. Which kind of diet is the best for people with, for instance, uh, leukopenia? Now, is uh, leukopenia and leukocytosis the same thing? Okay, I want you to think, think, what are you thinking right now? Okay, so let's, let's go into this. And I'm talking about the food. Currently, the, the research doesn't support specific foods or diets that can increase white blood cells, you don't need to avoid uh, fresh fruit and vegetables because it hasn't been shown to reduce the numbers of major infections. However, wash fruits and vegetables thoroughly before you eat them just to stay safe. So instead, of, don't just wipe them off on your chest or just run some water on them and make them they look wet. Remember, people have been handling these, uh, the fruits and vegetables. You want to wash, you want to get, even with myself, as much as I teach this, sometimes I'm, I'm moving really fast and I talk myself out of that and I'm doing something that, I, that could increase my risk of infection. Don't want any parts of infection. So here are some of the foods that you can avoid. Um, one on the top of the list is raw meat, eggs, and fish. Um, these are when you want to reduce your risk of infection. Again, remember raw meat, eggs, and fish. Another risk would be moldy or expired food. Next, unwashed fruit and vegetables. 
Next, the unpasteurized uh, beverages, including fruit and vegetable juice, beer and milk. And uh, another one is unpasteurized honey. Now you usually see this in raw honey, uh, unpasteurized honey. Sometimes uh, that can be uh, um, a, a threat. Uh, so unpasteurized honey, a lot of uh, people because of the raw uh, sense of uh, handling um, or the sense of handling raw uh, honey can uh, um, impose on your, your uh, health. And that's because it's unpasteurized. Pasteurization is is a process of keeping the usually uh, killing any pathogens uh, with heat. Uh, so, like even if you talk about orange juice, you're talking about heating it up so that it can kill any pathogens there. Um, if you have uh, a leukopenia, be extra cautious uh, to avoid. Infection, practice good hygiene, uh, use the antibacterial soap and warm water and scrub your hands uh, to uh, the tune of about 15 to 30 seconds. I use the uh, uh, happy birthday to you, but I'll sing uh, Eric's uh, uh, version of it. And, uh, you know, close your eye and make that wish. And dun, 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 dun. You know, yeah. All right. So, um, that's uh oh, <laughs> ah, that was funny. <laughs> I just had to say oh oh, 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 oh make that's... that wish. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Woo! Hey, all right. Yeah, that's that's on the cares on it. Um, and now you you have to wash your hands a lot, and that means to wash your hands many times throughout the day and every time before you prepare or you eat food. Don't be doing all that stuff, putting it on your face and your mouth and all that, because that's where those little infections start, but they grow into something that can make your entire body ill. So hygiene is super important. Uh, if you are touching yourself from different parts under your arms and in your private area and all that stuff, you got to stop and wash. And I know you probably say, uh, uh. Look, when you go into a private bathroom, you get a good idea how many people are spreading this because you have people that don't even touch the, they don't even put their hands under the water and it's automatic. You know, the little eye that reads the hand under there and you can do that without turning the water on. Uh, you, you turn it on automatically. So it's no excuse for being um, anything less than clean. Um Another thing that you can do to, um, and this is um, still to avoid infection, is to order it well done. If you're still eating meats and dairy products, you want to order it well done. Cook meats completely. That's the beef, the chicken, the fish, the eggs, because the heat kills all bacteria. Okay. Keep that in mind. He kills the bacteria. And that's why people can continue eating in such a way. They're like, I eat that every day, you know, and that's mm -hmm. because, you know, the way that we actually, um, we heat up the food and uh, we, we eat it because it doesn't have all of those, uh, the bacteria there on the food. Okay. We're going to bring care back up. It is about, uh, we have less than 60 seconds. We wanted to say thank you very much, everybody, uh, and leave some comments. I know there's much more to say. I have so much information here, especially I want to go into what uh, some of the cancers cause, uh, high white blood cells, uh, uh, you know, what's the deal on that? Uh, and, uh, you know, we need to talk about the, the elevations of white blood cell. And uh, we just want to thank everybody for being here today. Uh, thanks a lot. And we'll, we'll see you, uh, uh, you know, our uh, next uh, Saturday and at 8 a.m. Um, is it still PST now or standard or we just, I think so. I uh, guess yeah. it's yeah. just a standard time, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, yeah. yeah, Pacific standard and standard is the same thing. Okay. PST oh, yeah. is just a cool way to say it, I guess. Right. Whenever the whenever the time changes, it always kind of throws things off a bit. You know, I'm just happy that it's it's brighter out later. Oh, on yeah. Now. So yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that's true. Cool. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Thank you everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that joined us here today uh, for this discussion. Great information, Dr. Zari. Like always, I know you have more information to, to pour out to us, but we do have that time limit where we want to make sure we we keep it to where <laughs> get that book, get that book um, to where people can uh, get their information, do their own research as well, and make sure that they have a, a great understanding of it. Um, so again, thank you to everyone that subscribed to the YouTube channel, Dr. Farid Zarif. We appreciate it so much. Um, again, thank you for joining us here in the Mind of Nature. Our mission is to bring awareness, listen to your feedback. And now it's time for you to take action. As Dr. Zarich mentioned, we meet every Saturday, 8 a.m. PST. So thank you so much for joining us, everyone. <laughs> thank you. See you guys next time. I'm Dr. Zarif, the nutritionist.